So I'm delighted to, to welcome our friends from, uh, from Japan, uh, Reiko Yamada, uh, Midori Yamada, no relation, and Shigeo Kobayashi, who's going to be translating. Uh, Yoshiko. Um, they're going to be telling us about the, um, the stories of people who were um, affected by the bombings, bombings in Hiroshima um, and what they've been doing subsequently and stories of their families and um, their, their peace work. What was life like for people before the bomb was dropped? What was life in Hiroshima like? Hiroshima Hiroshima city, very beautiful city. And within the city, there are seven rivers coming into the bay area. So, four years before bomb was dropped, war started. And so, city, town, old area getting more like a wartime zone, which means a lot of uh, air raid shelters have to be made and uh, making some uh, fire breaks, demolishing houses, all these works taking place during that four years. え、市内の小学校の子供たちは安全のために田舎の方にあの疎開をする行動がそれぞれの学校で行われて、あいた小学校ではもう軍人が使っていました。And uh, also many schools, particularly primary schools, children were evacuated to countryside as a group. So that's been going on. So some school buildings were left empty, which soldiers started to use that building. So any grown-up men, including brothers, fathers, and so on, are all taken to the battlefield. So what, whoever left behind the women, mothers, school students, whatever, they all also called out to do some work to contribute to war effort. So it was rather abnormal situation itself. Therefore, all efforts are geared to the war, which means you have to really support war effort, physically, mentally, or if you have something to give to military, they did, metal and so on. 時々広島の上空に上空にはアメリカのBE29が来ていました。しかし大きな空襲がありませんでしたので、みんな子供たちはBE29というのはよく知っていました。So those days, many times BE29 bomber used to fly over Hiroshima, but they never dropped anything until that day. So Children uh, still in the city area knew that is a B29. They can point out and say it. そのような状況の中で、1945年の8月6日に原爆が投下されたわけです。So under that sort of situation, August 6, 1945, atomic bomb was dropped. So shall we go in? Yes, to yeah. Could you tell us a bit about um, what happened on that day? Yeah, those are those are hi. それではあの私は今日皆様にその核兵器原爆がどのように凄まじい被害を町に人に及ぼすかを 
皆さんにお知らせしたいと思います。So, taking today's opportunity, I would like to tell you what terrible horrific result it will bring by having atomic bomb on your above from above sky it just dropped on them. これから私は読ませていただきますけれどもそれはほんの私が感じた一部分でございます。多くの人たちはいろいろな経験をいたしました。Whatever、uh, I am going to read out prepared text is only part of my experience. There are many, many things I can tell and many people also felt different feelings, different experiences and so on. それでは読ませていただきます1945年8月に広島に世界で初めての原爆が投下されて When the first atomic bomb was dropped on Hiroshima I was an 11 year old girl 5th grader of a primary school That morning I was on, in the schoolyard under the blazing summer sun. Look, a, a, a B29. A boy shouted, and I looked up in the sky and saw the silver shining B29 bomber flying high in the blue sky, drawing a white arc with its vapor trail. That is pretty, I thought. The next moment, there was a white flash, and I was blinded. As I began to rush for an air raid shelter, the hot sand blew strong against my back and pushed my body down on the ground. When I reached the shelter with my schoolmate, it was already crowded with people from neighboring areas and there was no room left for us. While waiting outside, we got drenched from the sudden rain, which we later learned to be the radioactive black rain. We were wet and shivering with cold. The sun looked to be gone with heavy gray clouds hanging over the sky. Our town was 2.5 kilometers from Grand Zero and escaped from raging fires caused by the bomb. My injured and burnt Many injured and burned people fled to this area from the city center. They were, they were so heavily burned and disfigured that they didn't look like human beings. Every street in our town was so crowded with the injured that there was no room for us to walk. 私の父は1キロメートル地点の校舎内で被爆し、建物の外に出され、体中の外に出され、体中の外に出され、体中の外に出され、体中の外に出され、体中の外に出され、体中の外に出され、体中の外に出され、体中の外に出され、体中の外に出され、体中の外に出され、体中の外に出され、体中の外に出され、Due to wounds caused by pieces of broken glass. Even years later, fragments of glass would emerge from the skin of my father's body and make him faint. Twenty years after the bombing, he developed lung cancer and leukemia simultaneously. Despite blood transfusions and the bone marrow transplant donated by me, my father died in a flurry of conversions. 
My eldest sister, who was caught by the bomb on the platform of Hiroshima Station, 1.5 kilometers from the Grand Zero, came back home in the evening of the second day. She got burns on the neck and the back. As we had no medicine to treat her with, my mother put thin slices of cucumbers on her back to cool down the burns, but she only kept crying out in pain, unable to lie down with upper half her body naked and sore. My 13-year-old sister was sick on that day and stayed at home, so fortunately she escaped death. But all her teachers and classmates who had been mobilized to work near the city center on that day died. Almost every family in my neighborhood had victims of the bomb. They got injured or burned and many were missing. A good friend of mine in the neighborhood was waiting for mother to return home with four brothers and sisters. On the second day after the bombing, a mo moving black lamp crawled into the house. They first thought it was a big black dog, but soon realized it was their mother. She collapsed and died when she finally got home, leaving her five children behind. At another neighbor's home, a 13-year-old daughter didn't come home. Day after day, her mother went to look for her around Hiroshima City for about two months, but in vain. From around the third day, the dead bodies lying in the streets were brought to the playground of my school. They were cremated one after another. The town was filled with black smoke and the smell of burning bodies. According to the record, about 2,300 bodies were cremated there, but without being identified by name. All of them were treated as missing. Japan's defeat in the World War II was announced on August 15th, and the war ended. But the shortage of food continued. In my school, in the spring of the following year, we planted sweet potato seedlings in the schoolyard. On the day of harvest, as we dug the ground, human bones came out with the potatoes and we screamed to see them. The sweet potatoes were served for lunch, but we couldn't eat them. Um, Midori, do you want to share the story of your brother? あの、お父さんの話じゃ。お父さん。お兄さん。お兄さん。あの、お話をじゃ。あの、私は1949年に広島市の郊外で生まれました。I was born uh, out uh, suburb of the Hiroshima city in 1949. The town was 25 kilometers away from Hiroshima City, facing Miyajima Island, 
now known as the World Heritage Site. Among the people of a small town in Seto Island, see, the scars of the atomic bomb remain deep inside their mind. I am a second generation Hibakusha. In my family, my father and two brothers directly experienced atomic bomb. <coughs> Many of my elder cousins also fell victim of the bombing. I have created this story of my elder brother Jiro-chan, which I'm going to tell you showing pictures as well. But this is my part of contribution as a second generation survivor to really hope and stop the sad nuclear weapon wouldn't be dropped. After all, Hibakusha, like Keiko-san, has been making an effort to spread this information and the terrible situation they faced. And anyway, their contribution is sort of proven in the sense that the third one was not yet dropped. Now, a uh, story of Jiro-chan, my brother, who was 71 years ago, he was 13 years old. He was in Hiroshima when the atomic bomb was dropped. On the city. Jiro chan was a bright and a cheerful boy, a bit like a clown. When his sister sang, he often put on a funny dance to the tune. On August 6, 1945, Jiro-chan and his classmates, freshmen of a middle school, were engaged in demolishing houses on an area of Hiroshima city from where the current A-bomb dome could be seen. As most adult men had been sent to battlefield, boys and girls in the middle schools were mobilized to do such hard works. On that day, after the roll call, he and his classmates had just started to work. Then, 8.15 a.m., with a strong flash of light and a big shock from above. Jiro-chan was knocked down unconscious. When he came to, he found himself trapped under a fallen building. Fires were approaching and he couldn't move. Jiro-chan and other trapped students encouraged each other and cried for help with all their voices to the people running around to escape. They shouted, help me! Help us! Help! However, their voices were not heard. While desperately struggling to escape, his body suddenly got loose and he was able to crawl out under the heavy beam 
over his body. Next moment, big flames rose up like a giant monster and engulfed all his friend at once. Jiro chan and all, uh, lone survivor walked all day long and managed to get home so far away from Hiroshima city. His face was so black, with soot and swollen like a balloon, that his family couldn't recognize him at first. Day and night, for the next three days, Jiro-chan talked and talked about the hell on us. He had witnessed to his family, members and the neighbors. Then he suddenly fell into a deep and long sleep. Okay. It was only after three months that Jiro-chan finally came back to his senses. However, he was no longer a happy and cheerful boy. It was as if he had changed into someone else. From that day on, he stopped talking anything about the hell of August 6. All his classmates who were with him on that day were burned to death. So he felt guilty of having survived all alone, which remained as a deep scar. On March 11, 2011, in the aftermath of the great East Japan earthquake, there was a severe accident at Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. Hiroshima, Nagasaki. Japan suffered already the damage from nuclear weapons on Hiroshima and Nagasaki in 1945. Now, it was Japan that caused the grave damage and suffering from nuclear power. Sad and frustrated, Jiro-chan was heartbroken. He regretted so much that he kept silent for 65 years about what happened on Hiroshima on that day. As the one who actually experienced the tragedy, I should have informed many people of the atrocity of the atomic bombings. It should be my mission as a survivor. It should be the way to remember and console the souls of my friends who perished on that day. At the age of 80, Jiro-chan opened his mouth and started to relate in public what happened in Hiroshima on August 6, 1945. So it looked like he talks as if he offers prayers to his deceased friend. Jiro-chan is my dear big brother. Thank you. So this book I published two years ago and one copy with English wording as well. I am going to leave with you, Emma.
and which we hope you can use it when you talk to school children, particularly. Mm -hmm. And uh, so in that way, it will be used as a message mm -hmm. from Hiroshima. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Um, this book is, uh, is going to be added to the Peace Library um, here at Peace House, so people will be welcome to come and see it. Um, we've already been talking about uh, one of the local churches using it during their activities for young people, and I hope people will make use of it. Um, it's a, a terrible story, but beautifully told. Um, I'm sure we'll agree. Thank you. Um, could you tell us what life was like for people afterwards? Um, how were the, the children and the grandchildren uh, treated by people who knew what had happened? Were they accepted or...? So we survivors, Hibakusha, suffered quite a lot. However, even from Japanese government and also American government on that matter, haven't really got any kind of compensation, apology or treatment for 10 years after that, 1945, nothing was literally done. So, total of 600,000 people are exposed to this heat ray, blast and radiation. Also, by the end of that year, about 140,000 people died in Hiroshima and 70,000 people in Nagasaki. The under the blazing hot sun, of course, people are suffering on that day and the following days. However, not really help was given. They were just let down and they were dying. And so even the survivors had to remember that and also carry on that really sad, regrettable feeling. And so in a long, long time afterward still, they get kind of discrimination from the people who are not affected. Among my sort of friend circle or people known to me, many women never tried to marry, or even if they engaged, they are kind of separated because of that they cannot carry babies. That's what they are told. So, uh, like my brother, I just told his story. Uh, people who survived carry this terrible memory about losing friends and family members and so on. For a long, long time, they still carry that sad feeling. And also, of course, whatever they remember as a physical sort of scar, physical damage, and so on. They have to live with it. And sinking into second, third generation and more, even now, nobody knows what sort of effect it carries into future. Even now, I happen to help in this office for survivors and uh, as a consulting kind of service she offers as second generation. And even now, some more people start to ask questions. How is it affecting my body? How my health will be in the you know, near future and so on? If they get sick, is it due to this uh, carrying on radiation effect? 
And uh, it's very sad that, of course, many people didn't speak up for a long, long time. But still, once they realize, is it by any chance because of that radiation? And the answer is unknown still. So I believe two bombs dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki are not only on population in these two cities. It stays as damage or kind of scar on the human being. Human being, all of our population will carry this as a kind of negative picture of what this war and atomic bomb did. So when it dropped, of course, we were told it's a new type of bomb we have never seen. But nobody knows it was a nuclear weapon which was tested on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. I heard later that heat created by these bombs was like a sun itself, three to four thousand degrees centigrade. People who happened to be center area of that bomb, not only your clothing, skins also all burnt, or somebody just burnt out, shadow remained. And the blast it followed, which was 10, 20 times of the strong wind than typhoon we have very regularly throughout the year. So as you saw in this picture just shown, many uh, Japanese traditional houses are wooden structure. So it's very easy to just collapse. And many people are very landed and couldn't move. So once fire started, there was no escape. They all burned death. So the そしていろいろな体中に市販ができて亡くなる人、また助けてあげなくても逃げてきた人を一生懸命治療した人さえも亡くなったということでみんなこれはおかしいと、これは何だろうと思ったのです。それはやはり放射能の影響だったのです。So even those people who are not in that area when bomb came down. People started to go in there to look for survivors, friends, family members, whoever. They started to get effect. And those people who took care of the escaped people, they started to feel something strange, something happening. And the people started to die. So then they finally realized it's radiation. Radiation is killing. Radiation is taking their process in the bodies. And also pregnant mothers, when baby was born afterwards, many deformed babies came out. So that made people realize, oh, that is must be from radiation. Would you like to receive an apology from America and from the um, forces who were complicit in the attack? And what effect do you think that would have? Do you think it would be a positive thing or is it a bit late now? Well, Japanese government never uh, positively asked for apology, even in the San Francisco uh, Treaty, which was the sort of end of the war treaty. 
nothing was mentioned about it. And of course, the atomic bomb we took, that it was used, and it started nuclear age. And along with it also came nuclear power age. Now, of course, many survivors wanted to hear something, but nothing coming through. But of course, very recently, Obama, President Obama visited Hiroshima. And he also didn't say anything like apology. And many survivors wanted to hear that word. But he didn't say apology, but he said something else, that by dropping bomb, nuclear age should be ending, and this should be the start of the end of the nuclear age. That sort of word he said, which gave some kind of nodding among uh, survivors. So it is more important for us, rather than having apology, just word apology, doesn't mean much. What we expect current leaders, politicians to say or to think about is that we should start process of abolishing nuclear weapons. And, uh, America carries so many nuclear weapons. So, as soon as possible, they should get rid out of it. Um, we look forward to hearing more about your peace work um, uh, 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 later on in the interview. Thank you. Um, now, there's unfortunately a very strong belief um, uh, among people in America and a, lo a lot in England as well that um, these horrific bombings saved millions of lives mm. uh, by cutting the war short. Um, I think. Now, I don't think anybody in this room believes that to be true, but how do you respond to that idea? And to people who think that nuclear weapons are a necessary evil, as they say. So, at that time, the ですから、そこで原爆を必要はなかったんです。ですから、私たちあれは人体実験だと言っています。アメリカでは、そういう形で、あの、戦争を早く終わらせるために使ったんだという教育がずっとされてきましたけれども、あの、今はアメリカでも若い人たちが原爆の恐ろしさをだんだん分かってくれて、あの、考え方が、あの、
So American schools were taught that there was a reason to use that. Now, last seven years, I have been to America, visited many schools, and expressed my witness and the feeling and whatever she remembers and carry on. And so young students started gradually started to think that it really is a bad thing to have a nuclear weapon. It destroys human beings and so on and maybe never should have been used on human bodies. And one boy student asked me, did you have any apology from any American? And she said, no. And they, this boy sort of came to her and begged apology. She, he said, and it moved her so much so she started to feel something is changing in that situation. Thank you. Um, so could you tell us about the peace work that you do now? So you're, you're sharing your story with us and we're very grateful. It's very important to hear these accounts um, which are covered up, I think, a lot. Um, so could you tell us what what, you, what piece work you've been doing since and what your hope is, how you think we can go about abolishing nuclear weapons. So last 60 years, we formed this Hibakusha group and as a group, we have been acting. ずっと私どもは要請を続けています。核兵器をなくすために。So and we have been also demanding our own Japanese government that it is only country got damaged by nuclear weapons. So why don't we ask all these nations holding on to nuclear weapons to really stop it? で、核兵器の被害になった人たち、死没者は何もしていただいていませんので、そういう人たちに対しても日本政府はきちんと保障すべきだと一般の戦争に対しても保障すべき。原発になった人たちにも保障すべきだと私たちは要請を続けています。So our demand include good compensation for those survivors from atomic bomb, but also evacuees and the people who got radiation from nuclear power plant accident, those people also should be covered in good compensation. That sort of demand they have been asking, that wherever nuclear weapon tests are carried out, people near that testing site are really affected. And all those affected people <coughs> should be compensated. Uh, we Hibakusha and their families, our families, have been trying to link up with other peace-minded organizations and do whatever we can do. And of course, many people, if you explain and show witness statement, they do agree that we should be dealing with peace, not war. And also, from the beginning of January this year, they have been standing in the sort of tourist spot in Tokyo, Asakusa, Kaminari, Kaminari Monmai, asking people passing by to sign on the form, which is to appeal the abolition 
of nuclear weapons. Now in New York, it happened this international global nuclear ban, and uh, we carry that format here. So we'd like to pass you around later. If you agree, could you give us signature on that form? We'll take back and put together and send to the United Nations. 今回私たちがここに来たのはその目的です。新 ND の人たちを招きで。So of course our primary purpose coming here was to match with the timing which happened in New York. This、uh, treaty should be signed more better form positively. That is the reason we are here. However, very Very disappointingly, the UK government abstained from discussion, and Japanese government also <laughs> did abstain. So that outrageous sort of response. But still, we like to continue our efforts. Now, other example of the signature out of this trip, we managed to ask Nicola Sturgeon to sign. <laughs> and she agreed to sign straight away, saying, "Oh, I am lifelong CND member. I am still strong supporter of CND." <laughs> and also, nearby town Oldham, mayor signed. We met him yesterday, and we had very good discussion, and so on. So, if you like to join them. Please sign on this form, and、uh, we appreciate.、Yeah. Do you have copies here? Yeah, have we have a form copy. Just、yeah. yeah. 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 look at it. Now, and what is this? Ah, the yellow one. Ah, Derek. This one. Ah, the Chief Mayor. Ah, Deputy Mayor of. What is this? Yesterday. 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 Anyway, yeah, we have three forms here filed up. If you've got more copies, then,、uh, then、yes. perhaps we can sign them and, yeah, and、uh, we can even leave behind、mm. forms. Yes. Thank you very、okay. much.、Um, we really appreciate you making this journey to talk to us, to to travel around the UK, sharing your stories well, on your own. Well, thank you very much. 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 だからもちろん私たちも一緒に核兵器はなくしていくことです。Atomic bomb. Number more than ordinary people. They admit that they tend to have more cancer. あの、自爆未成の、まあ、にもあの癌は多いのではないかとあの思われます。で、私自身も三十四歳で乳癌になりました。で、その後十年、二十年後に反対側の乳癌になり、今なお。10年以上になりますけど治療を続けています。Now as a second generation,、uh, Midori had breast cancer at the age of 34, and 20 years later the other side of the breast also had the cancer. So one example, second generation are also getting similar sort of effect. It carries on and on, long, long time. It's a fact. So, government sort of honestly accept if survivors get cancer, 
it must be from atomic bomb radiation. At, at least they admit it. But not only cancer, there are many different yeah. <laughs> sickness disease involved. Yes, um, we, uh, in Oxford, we mark Hiroshima and Nagasaki Day every year. Hi. We have a peace plaque on the wall 200 yards from here. There is a and we have a tree in the park, which is the peace tree. So we, we mark Hiroshima and Nagasaki Day by meeting at the peace tree. The Hewa no Kitte no Arimashite, so no Mai de, Minna Atsumatte, Oinori Shirete. So my question is really to maybe to Emma, but to all of you, the film that you're making now yes. and so on. Maybe ready by Hiroshima time this yeah. year. Hiroshima. So it would be nice to use that film. Film. So film. 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 And your beautiful um, drawings that show really moving. And I wonder whether other people were like him, and when Fukushima disaster happened, mm. that they also felt they wanted to uh, finally speak about mm. the things that had happened. 同じような立場に置かれた人たちもそういうことを感じたんでしょうかね。そういうあの多くの話を聞いております。Yes, many many stories she had that many second generation or first generation to speak with. They started to feel suddenly after Fukushima accident that we shouldn't be silent. Yeah. Um, it has to be in form of a question because I'm not completely well informed. Mm -hmm. Is it true that Japan has nuclear weapons on its territory in Okinawa? Mm -hmm. And is it true that the Japanese people are quite happy with this? Ah, mm -hmm. no. um, as a matter of fact, yes. There are nuclear weapons, but not owned by Japanese government. It is owned by American. We have, as you have here, many American bases, including Okinawa, biggest one, and scattered all over the country. No official admission is there, but everybody knows American bases carry nuclear weapons. So, very ironically way, Japan is sort of protected by that. So, other country know that. China, Korea, North Korea, and all these. So, it's all, all under American sort of nuclear umbrella deterrent. And the Japanese people cannot say anything about it because the Japanese government accept having American bases. So that, that much we can say, yes. It's the same here. Caroline, yes, here is the same. The the Uh, I've just come back from the negotiations in New ah, York. New York in Toronto. Ah, and I brought you a present. The present of what? A very little present. Oh, thank you. Wait. <laughs> so it's here. This is the General Assembly. Here is the start of negotiations last Monday. Banned nuclear weapons. Mm -hmm. 
This is conference. That was in the morning. Kind you know, that was just sort of formal general, statements in the morning. Uh, and we were upstairs in the balcony. The this is the like conference room four. Um, and here it says, United Nations Conference to negotiate a legally binding instrument to prohibit nuclear weapons first session. And you've got the time and you've got the date. Uh -huh. This is just a demonstration, <laughs> as we do. Now, this is really interesting. Now, the woman in... Yeah, that's the chair of the of the um, that's the president. That's of of the um, negotiations. Um, sort of that's um, Ambassador Elaine White Gomez from Costa Rica, who has chaired these negotiations. And she's done it very very well. And, and what she wanted was to have free dialogue between the delegates and civil society. So these are civil society. Here they are, and here she is. Uh, so those are our friends there. And it was very, very, very interesting and useful. And here, here's another photograph of the same thing. Uh, and that happened on Wednesday. Right, well, those are the photographs. And she said in her summary of how far she'd got, she said, she said that it had gone much better than she expected. She, particularly because of the input of the civil society. Uh, and she wanted to continue in that way. And she thought she had really advanced very far. And she thought, and I want to say one other thing after that. She hopes to put out a draft version of the treaty before the next lot of negotiations starts. Uh, in, in the end of June, July. And she said, that's that one in yellow. Uh, 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 that um, she thought that they would be able to sign a treaty on the 7th of July. So, and the other thing I wanted to say about the discussions is that the the topic of victims came much, much further up. Uh, so, it will be a part of the treaty. If all the delegates insist that it should be part of the treaty. So perhaps your wish will come true. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, folks. Um, our guests um, are off to London to, to do another talk, um, but we're, we're very grateful uh, again for you sharing your your testimony. Thank you. Well, uh, thank, you. thank you very much. Actually, this is the end of our tour. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs>
um, and what they've been doing subsequently and stories of their families and um, their, their piece work. What was life like for people before the bomb was dropped? What was life in Hiroshima like? Hiroshima no matsu so no mono ga bakutan wo otosarai no mai wa douyu kanji datta de shou ka? Jōtai wo chotte iku. Hiroshima no Hiroshima city, very beautiful city. And within the city, there are seven rivers coming into the bay area. So, four years before bomb was dropped, war started. And so city, town, all area getting more like a wartime zone, which means a lot of uh, air raid shelters have to be made and uh, making some uh, fire breaks, demolishing houses, all these works taking place during that four years. And also many schools, particularly primary schools, children were evacuated to countryside as a group. So that's been going on. So some school buildings were left empty, which soldiers started to use that building. To do some work to contribute to war effort. So it was rather abnormal situation itself. And so therefore, all efforts are geared to the war. Which means you have to really support war effort, physically, mentally, or if you have something to give to military, they did metal and so on. Sometimes, Hiroshima の状況に状況にはアメリカの B29 が来ていました。しかし大きな空襲がありませんでしたので、みんな子供たちは。B29 というのはよく知っていました。So those days, many times B29 bomber used to fly over Hiroshima, but they never dropped anything until that day. So children still in the city area knew that is a B29. They can point out and say it. そのような状況の中で、1945年の8月6日に原爆が投下されたわけです。So under that sort of situation, August 6, 私は今日皆様にその核兵器原爆がどのように凄まじい被害を町に人に及ぼすかを皆さんにお知らせしたいと思います。So taking today's opportunity, I would like to tell you what terrible horrific result it will bring by having atomic bomb on your Above, from above sky, it just dropped on them. So, 
多くの人たちはいろいろな経験をいたしました。Whatever, uh, I am going to read out prepared text is only part of my experience. There are many, many things I can tell, and many people also felt different feelings, different experiences, and so on. それでは読ませていただきます。1945年8月1日、広島に世界で初めての1945年、ファーストアトミックボンブが発表されたのは、広島に初めて私は11歳の子が、リフスグレーダーのプライマリースクール。そのもの、私はイン・スクール・ヤード、under the blazing summer sun。Look, a A, a B 29. A boy shouted, and I looked up in the sky and saw the silver shining B 29 bomber flying high in the blue sky, drawing a white arc with its vapor trail. That is pretty, I thought, and the back. As we had no medicine to treat her with, my mother put thin slices of cucumbers on her back to cool down the burns, but she only kept crying out in pain. Unable to lie down with upper half her body naked and so. My 13 year old sister was sick on that day and stayed at home. So fortunately, she escaped death. But all her teachers and classmates who had been mobilized to work. Near the city center on that day, died. Almost every family in my neighborhood had victims of the bomb. They got injured or burned, and many were missing. A good friend of mine in the neighborhood was waiting for mother to return home with four. Brothers and sisters. On the second day after the bombing, a mo moving black lamp crawled into the house. They first thought it was a big black dog, but soon realized it was their mother. She collapsed and died when she finally got home. Leaving her five children behind. At another neighbor's home, a 13 year old daughter didn't come home. Day after day, her mother went to look for her around Hiroshima City for about two months, but in vain. My school was three weeks old. From around the third day, the dead bodies lying in the streets were brought to the playground of my school. They were cremated one after another. The town was filled with black smoke and the smell of burning bodies. According to the record, About 2,300 bodies were cremated there, but without being identified by name. All of them were treated as missing. Japan's defeat in the World War II was announced on August 15th, and the war ended. But the shortage of food continued in my school. The next moment, there was a white flash, and I was blinded. 
As I began to rush for an air raid shelter, the hot sand blew strong against my back and pushed my body down on the ground. When I reached the shelter with my schoolmate, it was already crowded with people from neighboring areas and there was no room left for us. While waiting outside, we got drenched from the sudden rain, which we later learned to be the radioactive black rain. We were wet and shivering with cold. The sun looked to be gone with heavy grey clouds hanging over the sky. Our town was 2.5 kilometers from Grand Zero and escaped from raging fires caused by the bomb. My injured and burnt, many injured and burnt people fled to this area from the city center. They were, they were so heavily burnt and disfigured that they didn't look like human beings. Every street in our town was so crowded with the injured that there was no room for us to walk. My father was inside the school building about one kilometer away from the center of the explosion. He was rescued from under fallen building and managed to make it back home. But he was bloodied all over his body due to wounds caused by pieces of broken glass. Even years later, fragments of glass would emerge from the skin of my father's body and make him faint. Twenty years after the bombing, he developed lung cancer and leukemia simultaneously. Despite blood transfusions and the bone marrow transplant donated by me, my father died in a flurry of conversions. My eldest sister, who was caught by the bomb on the platform of Hiroshima Station, 1.5 kilometers from the Grand Zero, came back home in the evening of the second day. She got burns on the neck. School in the spring of the following year, we planted sweet potato seedlings in the schoolyard. On the day of harvest, as we dug the ground, human bones came out with the potatoes and we screamed to see them. The sweet potatoes were served for lunch, but we couldn't eat them. Um. Majority, do you want to share the story of your brother? あの、お、お父さんの the town was 25 kilometers away from Hiroshima city, facing Miyajima Island, now known as a World Heritage Site. Among the people of a small town in Seto Island, see, the scars of the atomic bomb remain deep inside their mind. I am a second generation Hibakusha. In my family, my father and two brothers directly experienced atomic bomb. 
Many of my elder cousins also fell victim of the bombing. I have created this story of my elder brother Zero Chan, which I'm going to tell you showing pictures as well. But this is my part of contribution as a second generation survivor to really hope and stop the third nuclear weapon wouldn't be dropped. After all, Hibaksha, like Keiko-san, has been making an effort to spread this information and the terrible situation they faced. And anyway, their contribution is sort of proven in the sense that the third one was not yet dropped. Now, a uh, story of Jiro Chan, my brother, who was 71 years ago, he was 13 years old, he was in Hiroshima when the atomic bomb was dropped. On the city. Jiro chan was a bright and a cheerful boy, a bit like a crown. When his sister sang, he oft 